Hello, welcome to English 090 or Basic Composition. I'm Carol Mulligan and I'll be your instructor this semester. I'd like to give you a brief overview of the course. You'll notice that writing takes many different forms, not just so much in the shape of the letters, maybe how they're laid out on the page, but many of the aspects of writing formatting are recognizable. For example, we know that graffiti are often in day glow colors and often show up on the sides of buildings. Journals or diaries are printed in little books with each page dated and they're often handwritten. Text messages, because they have little bitty screens, often have very strange shorthands on them, which people who don't have uh, texting have difficulty reading. And of course, if you've ever gotten a ransom note, you'll know that a lot of the letters are cut out at random from other magazines to hide the handwriting or the printer copy of the ransom producer. Now, phone numbers, as you can see, have a very standard format. The exchange, the area code always comes first, and it's in parentheses, and then you see the exchange. And then you see a hyphen, and then you finally see the last four digits of the phone number. And regardless of the shape it's in, because the format is always the same, you recognize it as a phone number. Similarly, we recognize the front of a newspaper. There's always the title of the newspaper at the top. There's always a headline. Usually there's pictures. It's usually there's subheadings. And the text is frequently laid out in columns. Uh, the pharmacy label often has a consistent heading. You recognize that. And you may recognize the format of a graphic novel. Very few words, very large pictures, probably on newsprint like a comic book. Now this next one may not be so familiar to you, but this is what some journal articles look like when they're published in professional journals. And you'll get more familiar with those as we go on. Whatever your goal, you will need to write academically in college. And that means that you'll have to follow what we call the conventions of writing in the field that you pursue. Now, if you were submitting manuscripts to professional journals, you'd have rules as complicated as this, as this but we're not submitting for journal publication at this point. But there are conventions that we have to follow as well. And this is what an essay submitted to an English class needs to look like. There are rules. Uh, you can see that in the upper left-hand corner always is your name. Under that, your professor's name. Under that, the name of the course. And under that, the date that it's submitted. An essay always has a title. It's always one-inch margins all the way around, double-spaced, and in Times New Roman, 12 point black font. Also, if in your essay you have quoted other materials, your essay will end with an, on a new page that's called the Works Cited page, which means these are the things that I read that I mentioned in my paper. That's, those are the works cited. And each listing is the first line is just straight across, and if there's any additional lines in a listing, they're usually indented like this and the listings are listed alphabetically by the author's last name or if there's not an author then by the editor and so on. These are what we call again the conventions. This is what they look like and because this is an English class we follow the conventions of the Modern Language Association or MLA style guide and in the back of your book the everyday writer under a gold tab there's a, an abbreviated form of all the rules for the MAI, MLA style guide. Now professional journals end up looking more like this and as you can see they have some titles that might give us all a little trouble like Tiotropium bromide for the maintenance of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. That's a mouthful but in a professional journal that might be appropriate. You'd always have the authors or, uh, or the author of the uh, journal article and then the text is often broken up into standard um, components like an introduction and so on. 
These are kind of detailed things, admittedly, but they're not difficult. They just take memorizing and using. In the English department, we're always looking to help you learn actively, think critically, communicate with clarity and originality, and as we've just talked about, use the appropriate conventions in the field for which you're writing. And if you follow those things, you're well on your way to success as a student and as a writer.